Our series is entitled Foundations, and so we're talking about the foundation stones that make your life solid. When your foundation is strong, your house will stand. Storms still come. Wind still blows. Floods still happen. But on a solid foundation, you're fine. You keep going. You stay strong. But when your foundation is sand, or your foundation is cracked, your foundation has sunk, you got problems. Doors won't close, ceiling starts breaking, plumbing has leaks. Many of you have been in a house with foundation problems. It's no fun. And many of us live lives with foundation problems. Now today I'm gonna talk about this foundation of worship. Praise and worship brings the presence and the power of God into our lives. Now, I know that many of you kind of have that, eh, I'm not too into worship, I'm really, like many people come to church after the music, after the praise, after the worship, because they feel like, eh, it's not really my thing, I just come to hear the teaching, right? And even in some churches, they'll say, the music is the preliminaries, which I guess would mean, you know, the other things, that's the real church. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. Worship is a foundation in our relationship with God. And I'm gonna show you some powerful scriptures today, but we don't even have to go to the Bible to know that humans are worshipers. Every human being worships something, right? Some of you guys, you go stand at the car or you go stand at a Harley and you're like, wow. You're worshiping. You're admiring. You're honoring. You're like, dude, what'd you do? Tell me more about my idol. Right? It's cool. I do it too. Right? I was at a car show. They rolled this custom car out onto the boat. You know what we did? We all stood up and clapped. Applause. Yeah! For a freaking car. Right? But every Sunday, there's hundreds of thousands of people across America that stand up, lift up their hands, sing song, shout for a football game. Right? We know how to worship. No one has to teach us. See, sometimes folks come to church and go, yeah, I don't, I don't really understand what's going on there. You do too. You worship what you love. You celebrate what you enjoy. You get involved and you express admiration for anything that you think is cool. And no one has to tell you how to do it. You'll jump to your feet, you'll lift up your hands. I was at a soccer game and they didn't even make a goal. They just kinda thought about trying, got close to making a goal, and the whole crowd, ah! Nope, nope, missed. The game finished 0-0, zero, zero, and they shouted the whole time. If you will shout for nil-nil, you are a true worshiper. Right? But one time, years ago, I was in Australia, and, and, and the, the U2 band was there. Bono and U2, you ever heard of them? Some of you old people know what I'm talking about? And there were 75,000 people in a stadium, and they had a huge stage and a wall of lights, and they were singing all the songs that we know, and the crowd was into it, and the crowd lifting their hands. At one time, he, Bono had the whole crowd waving in unison, 75,000 people. Don't tell me you don't know how to worship. You know how to worship, and you do worship what you admire. The question is, do you worship God? Not just our musicians, not just our athletes, not just our creations. Do you worship the creator? In fact, he's really the only one you are commanded to worship. Amen? Look with me in John chapter 4 and verse 23. 
Jesus says, the hour is coming and now is. In other words, it's on now. When true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking those who will worship him. God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. What's a true worshiper? Well, Jesus said it's someone who worships in spirit and truth. So what's not a true worshiper? Well, that's the person who comes to church but just kind of goes through the motions. You know, you're in church. You're, you're supposed to be in the worship service. But you're like, oh, whatever, how long is this going to go on? Right? I mean, you need to get used to it because heaven is filled with worship. Are you going to stand like this in heaven? Right? I've had people tell me, you know, Pastor, I'd come to your church, but, you know, it's kind of loud. You, you, and it's kind of, you know, a lot of music and everything. And I, I, I like a quiet church. And, and I always think, oh, you like one of those churches that doesn't follow the Bible. You want to go where they don't worship the Lord. Well, you know, I worship in my heart, in my own way. You know, the Bible said when you get to heaven, there is singing. There is trumpets. There is music as loud as thunder. There is thousands upon thousands of voices filling heaven with praise and worship. It's going to be loud in heaven, guys. The way some of you live, you're not going to like heaven. It's too happy. It's too much music. You're going to be standing over in the corner going, oh, man. When's this going to get over? You know, the Bible said they're going to sing for thousands of years. You're going to stand there with a stick up yourself for thousands. Okay, bring it back now. Bring it back. No, the Father is seeking for true worshipers that will worship him in spirit, not go through the motions, not just sing a hymn because that's what everybody's doing, but out of their spirit and according to his word, his truth, which makes you free, God is looking for that kind of worshiper. So when God is looking, is he looking for you? Imagine that. The Lord is looking. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, and he's looking for true worshipers, and he comes to you, and he goes, nope, not you. Nope, not you. No, no. Oh, there's one, a true worshiper. Does God see you? Does God hear your worship? Does God recognize your heart? Because God is looking for true worshipers, those that will honor him, Exalt him, praise him, promote him, lift him up, adore him. You know what praise and worship is all about. Well, I've had many people say to me, Pastor, you know, I, I just don't feel the way you feel. I mean, I can't worship God when I don't feel it. I have to be true to myself. I have to be honest with my own heart. Okay, so let's follow your line of thinking. You say to your children, hey, uh, I, I want you to clean up your room and get your homework done. You know, Dad, I'm not feeling that. <laughs> and I got to be honest with myself. I, I have to be real with what I feel. And chores and homework is not happening. What are you going to say to your son? You're going to say, well, you're going to feel this, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you don't let your kids tell you what they feel to dictate how they live. You're going to call your boss tomorrow morning. You know, I'm not feeling work today. I need a self-care day. And your boss is going to say, yeah, I don't really care about your self-care. But so often when it comes to God, we excuse ourselves. 
We rationalize. We find a way out. We'll shout for Russell Wilson, but we won't shout for Jesus. We'll jump for a touchdown, but we won't jump for the presence of the Lord. So what is important in your life? What do you really value? It shows in what you'll praise and what you'll worship. If we stay in, live in the presence and the power of God, we'll see it in our lives. Praise and worship is not just to make church fun or cool or sound pretty. It's to bring that presence and power of God into your life every day. It's actually more important that we sing and worship and glorify the Lord outside of church, in our home. I mean, in your car while you're driving. Don't close your eyes, but sing to the Lord. Yeah, worship is a part of our life. In Ephesians chapter 5, and verse 18, notice I'm just reading New Testament verses here. Ephesians 5 and 18, do not be drunk with wine. In other words, don't try to find your peace in a bottle or from a pill or from a joint or from something you can snort. No, be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always. Yeah, not just when you got the race. Give thanks when you got fired. Because you know God's going to take care of you. Give thanks when the diagnosis was not good. Because you know God's going to heal you. Give thanks when you're going through the hard times because you know God is going to use it to bring about good times. Be filled with the Spirit, singing, praising, worshiping, giving thanks to the Lord. That's New Testament life. Well, some people say, I I got filled with the Spirit back in 1993. I was filled with the Spirit. Well, is that the last time? You were filled with the Spirit? Because that's a long time ago. And most of it's drained out of you now. You know what I'm saying? You need to stay filled with the Spirit. You need to stay fresh in the Spirit. Every week, let's be filled with the Spirit. Singing, worshiping, praising the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and verse 14, the apostle writes, If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind or my understanding is unfruitful. So God gave us this gift from the Holy Spirit to pray in tongues. And when our mind doesn't know what to pray, we can still pray with the Spirit. And we're told through Scripture, we pray the perfect will of God. But he goes on to say, what is the conclusion then? I'm in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 15. The apostle says, I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. So for us, that's English, Russian, Spanish, Samoan. Your understanding is whatever languages you know in your mind. But we also have this language of the Spirit. And then he said, I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. So even if you can't remember the words, sing in the Spirit. Even if you don't know what to say, sing in the Spirit. Your mind doesn't have to lead this worship. Your spirit can lead this worship. And so we sing to the Lord in the Spirit. I often pray over our little ones singing in the Spirit. God knows what they're facing. He knows their future. I'm praying and singing the perfect will of God. We don't just worship when we're here in the sanctuary. We worship God every day because we need God in our lives every day. You know, Jesus said, if you don't worship me, the rocks will cry out. That's a pretty interesting thought. You can be replaced by a rock. 
Doesn't speak real highly of that person. Don't be replaced by a rock. Don't let creation take your place. You're made in the likeness and image of God. You exalt the Lord. You lift up the Lord. You worship the Lord and see what God can do in your life. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap right there. Sometimes we feel like, you know, I, I worship in my own way. But the Bible's very specific. Praise, posture, matters. Your posture, how you worship, it matters. Of course, Old Testament, very specifically, when they brought a sacrifice, how they brought the sacrifice, who would take the sacrifice, and what they did with the sacrifice. Thank the Lord we're not having to bring a sheep to church, right? Because you don't want to be telling your kids, well, today, kids, we're taking Daisy to church. <laughs> They're like, no, Dad, not Daisy. Yep, Daisy's day to serve the Lord. But in our New Testament, we're lifting up hands. We're singing. We're clapping. We're worshiping. And our posture matters. Again, if you've got that closed don't mess with me, I got an attitude, posture. You're communicating to God, not just to us, to God, right? If you go to the business meeting tomorrow, you're at the office tomorrow, and the new guy, brand new hire, is at the conference table, and he sits like this the whole meeting. The whole meeting. What's gonna happen? And he says, well, you know my heart. <laughs> yeah, I know your heart is crazy. Yeah, well, don't worry what I look like on the outside. Because you know my heart. What's the, the boss is going to say to you after the meeting, who's that turkey? Right? And you're going to be like, oh, that's our new guy. He's, he's really good. He's got a good heart. And the boss is going to say, if the boss is in a good mood, he'll say, I'll give him one more chance. But if he didn't change that attitude, if he doesn't change that posture, he's out. Common. Every day. Everybody knows that. How come when you come to church, you can treat God like this? But God knows my heart. Yeah, he knows your heart's funky. <laughs> he knows you don't give a rip. He knows you're only here because your wife is in charge. Thank God for a godly wife. <laughs> in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8, the apostle, right? I'm reading New Testament. I desire, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. Lift up your hands when you pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your hand on my family. Thank you that you're protecting my children. Thank you that you bless my wife. Thank you, God, you prosper my family. Lifting up holy hands. That's what the Bible teaches in Psalm 47, verses 1 and 2, clap your hands, all you people. Not just the spiritual folks, everybody. Clap your hands. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Right? Heaven is loud. Angels are praising. People are clapping and shouting. You go to the football game, you love it. Even at a Mariner game, which only wins about every four or five weeks, they're shouting. And we love it when it's loud. We come to church, and all of a sudden, oh, they don't have to be so loud. <laughs> what do you honor? What do you worship? What does God see in your worship? The Bible said God is looking for those who worship him. In Psalm 111, it said, praise the Lord with your whole heart in the assembly. Right? So in the sanctuary, 
in the congregation, over and over throughout the scripture. In God's house, we should bring the praise, bring the worship, shout to the Lord, clap our hands, tell God we honor and we love and we lift him up above everything else. But at home too, right? At home, and it's so easy now. You got your CDs, you got your Alexa, you got all your phone stuff, put it on your speaker. I got all the Katina's CDs right here. They got 19 new songs right there. They got all their love chapter right there. They got their collage, and they got their Sunday worship set. You can worship with the Katina's right at home, right? I, I do it all the time when I have the little ones. The other night, I had Mahau, and he was squawking a little because mom and dad weren't there. And I mean, maybe the first or second time he hadn't been with mom and dad. And so I'm, I'm, I'm holding, I'm walking around, and I said, well, I know Tasha sings to him, so, so I'm gonna sing. Maybe, maybe I can trick him, and he'll think I'm mama. <laughs> right? So I'm walking with little Mahal, and I just start singing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. A little Mahal just, he stopped peep, squeaking and squawking. And he just looking at me. I don't know what he was thinking. He's like, you're not mama. But I just kept it up. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Pretty soon he's sleeping away. I don't know if you got tired of my singing or what. <laughs> right? Worship. Bring the presence of God. Bring the power of God. How many parents are so upset, uptight and, and nervous and anxious and the kids are going through, they feel all that spirit and they're struggling and yeah, I, even with the two-year-old, last week I was putting him to bed and I just started singing. I have decided to follow Jesus. And, and Levi's just looking at me like, really, Papa, are you just going to sing? <laughs> you know what, though? If your kids do not see you worship outside of church, then they assume whatever happens in church is not for real life. We don't do, we don't do that stuff when we're home. We don't do that stuff at the office. No, no, that's just church. But then we leave church and then we get real. Yeah, you better leave church and keep it real and bring the praise and bring the worship. Yeah, so I'm with Levi and I'm just singing. Though none go with me, still I will follow. And so Levi's laying there. I thought, his eye, I thought he was sleeping. And, and so I stopped and he said, Papa. I said, yeah, Levi, sing. Yeah, some people like my singing. A two-year-old. <laughs> but that's, that's what the Bible says. Lift up your hands. Shout to the Lord. Clap. Sing to the Lord. Okay, look at Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. We're, we're in a time across the world where people are struggling with so many things, physical things, financial things, emotional, suicide, more than ever before. More young children have been shot and killed in the last few weeks here in America than have died of COVID since the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, we don't talk about that a lot, but more young children have been shot than have died of COVID. So what's the real problem here? It's more than just the sickness. It's relationship with God. It's morality. It's spiritual life. It's purpose. It's vision. There's more going on. And praise and worship will break the chains of darkness. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas were preaching in Philippi. Right, they're, they're preaching, they're getting people saved. They actually started a new church right there in Philippi. Later, 
Paul wrote the letter to the Philippian church. That's what they're doing right here in the book of Acts, chapter 16. And it says people started getting saved, and it made the world, the officials, mad. So they took Paul and Silas, and they beat them. In verse 23, they laid many stripes on them and threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Would you serve God if you could get beaten for it? Would you get your neighbor born again if you could be reported and lose your job for it? I mean, are we real or are we just punk Christians? We just fake Christians. Christians as long as we're blessed. Christians so we can get in the country club. Well, thank the Lord, we probably will never know. We'll never have to be beaten for our faith. But I want to believe I have that kind of faith. I'll stand in front of that kind of world. And there are many nations in our world today where that's happening. You can be persecuted. You can be beaten. You can be fired from your job just because of your faith. Next week, we'll have David Curry here, the president of Open Doors, which has people worldwide helping the persecuted church. <laughs> Nations where you can be killed for getting another person saved. That's where they minister, and our church supports that ministry. He's going to be here next weekend. Make sure you're here. Make sure you don't miss because he will help us have that kind of faith. Where You know, some of you can't even stand up in front of the neighbor who just thinks you're weird. What are you going to do in front of the devil that wants to take you out? Well, we got to worship God. We got to stay filled with the Spirit of God. So Paul and Silas were beaten and put into prison. And then it says they put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks. So what did they do? Here they are trying to get people saved, and they end up in jail for it. Verse 25, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. I don't know about you, but I might have been praying, but I'd be like, Lord, why'd you let this happen? Lord, what the heck's going on? Lord, really? A little help down here? Not Paul and Silas. They're singing. They're worshiping God. I can imagine locked in the inner prison. Paul starts singing. He turns mourning to dancing. Mm, 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 mm. He turns ashes to beauty. Mm, 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 mm. Silas joins in. He turns graves into gardens. He's the only one who can. Pretty soon Paul and Silas are singing out loud. The whole prison can hear him. He's the only one who can. I wonder if the other prisoners joined in. It's like, who are these crazy people singing in the prison? This is a bad place. This is not the prison where you have prisoner rights. You get YouTube and Wi-Fi. No, this is where you just are chained up. And they're singing, worshiping God. And then it says, suddenly, there was an earthquake. Verse 26. And the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Listen, church, if you'll worship God, your prison will be shaken. If you don't worship God, you will be shaken. The world is shaking with fear over sicknesses, poverties, economic changes, social changes, political struggles. The world is shaking, but for the Christian who worships God, who will sing while they're in chains, the prison 
shakes. The circumstances shake. The problems shake. We don't shake because we stand in the presence of God and the power of God flows through us. So what is it? Are you trembling because of your circumstances? Or do you worship God and make the things around you tremble? And then it said everybody, not just Paul and Silas, everybody's chains dropped off of them. Doors opened up. You want to help your loved ones? Start worshiping God. You want to make a difference in your family? Bring the presence of God to every dinner, to every meeting, to every time you're together, because you are a worshiper. You want to help your coworkers come to the Lord? Yeah, let them sense the presence of God in your life, because you worship God for that whole ride. You ever been sitting on the bus, you got your earphones, or on the tram, you got your earphones, and you're listening to praise and worship, and you don't even realize you started singing out loud. You know, you've probably seen that guy. And he's just singing. Yeah, if you're praising God, the prison around you starts shaking. If you don't worship God, you start shaking. Because the world is a dark place. Let's bring the praise. Let's bring the worship. Let's let God see that we believe that this is real for us and that our foundation is strong in the Lord.